Hi, I'm Mikhail Kasibarad. I'm a cardiologist at St. Luke's Mid America Heart Institute. In this uh, analysis of impulse trial, uh, we looked at the effects of empagliflozin as GLT2 inhibitor on uh, health status, which is symptoms, uh, physical limitations, and quality of life uh, in patients uh, hospitalized with acute heart failure. Just to take a step back, uh, we presented the main result of Empulse uh, at the American Heart Association a few months ago, and it was just uh, published recently. And uh, it's important to keep in mind that patients hospitalized with acute heart failure uh, experience a um, very high burden of symptoms and physical limitations and poor quality of life, and we have dearth of therapies that can be effective in improving those outcomes. In the main Empulse study we previously showed that empagliflozin as compared with placebo significantly improved um, uh, what we call total clinical benefit, which is a composite, hierarchical composite of uh, death, uh, recurrent heart failure events, and change in Kansas City cardiomyopathy questionnaire, which is a measure of symptoms, physical limitations, and quality of life. But in this analysis specifically, we wanted to concentrate on the effects of empagliflozin on those very um, um, uh, outcomes. Uh, very important outcomes to patients with uh, uh, acute heart failure, which is the symptom burden, the burden of physical limitations, and the poor quality of life. Ampulse trial uh, enrolled over 500 patients as it were hospitalized with acute heart failure. Um, it's really a unique trial in many ways because uh, it included patients uh, with acute heart failure regardless of the ejection fraction. Uh, so both those with uh, reduced or preserved ejection fraction uh, were uh, enrolled as well as those with or without diabetes and also those with either um, uh, worsening chronic heart failure uh, or de novo uh, heart failure, which means that was a new diagnosis of acute heart failure patients were hospitalized with. So all of those patient uh, types of patients were included in the study. And while in hospitals, they were randomized to either empagliflozin uh, or placebo uh, and treated for 90 days. Specifically for the outcomes that we concentrated on in this analysis, Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire, which is a gold standard of health status, uh, that was assessed at randomization as well as 15, 30, and 90 days. So uh, in this particular analysis, there were two key objectives. One is to evaluate the effect of empagliflozin on the primary endpoint, which was a total clinical benefit, uh, across the uh, turtiles of uh, Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire uh, scores. Um, so essentially, uh, to try to understand whether the clinical, total clinical benefit of empagliflozin differed depending on degree of symptomatic impairment at baseline. And second, perhaps even more importantly, uh, to look at the effect of empagliflozin on symptoms, physical, physical limitations, and quality of life uh, during the treatment period. So you know, what happens uh, after 15, 30, and 90 days of treatment. So in terms of what we found, um, for the first objective, uh, we uh, saw that empagliflozin as compared with placebo uh, significantly benefit patients in terms of a total clinical benefit so against that hierarchical composite of death, heart failure events, and change in Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire to a similar extent, regardless of the degree of symptomatic impairment at baseline. And for the second objective, we found that patients treated with empagliflozin had significantly greater improvement in the symptoms as well as physical limitations and quality of life over time, and importantly, uh, that benefit emerged already at 15 days and was sustained up to 90 days. So very, very quick onset of benefit and then consistent benefit over time. Right, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have dearth of treatments in uh, acute heart failure that have been proven to significantly uh, improve symptoms, physical limitations, quality of life in this patient population that's really symptomatically and functionally impaired. Uh, and I think the message from this data is that uh, SGLT2 inhibition for patients acutely hospitalized with heart failure is a treatment that won't just potentially improve clinical events, uh, but also make patients feel better and be able, uh, enable them to be able to do more, which is a critical uh, goal of care in this patient population. So yet another very important incentive uh, to potentially think about initiating SGLT2 inhibitors in the hospital in patients with heart failure regardless of what type of heart failure they have, whether it's reduced or preserved ejection fraction, whether it's chronic decompensated or de novo heart failure, because we saw that the results on health status were very consistent across all of those subgroups. Well, I think we already have a lot of data on SGLT2 inhibition and heart failure, all different types of heart failure, but uh, in the acute heart failure space, there is more data coming. 
uh, I think importantly. Um, so there are ongoing studies looking at dapagliflozin in acutely compensated heart failure. Uh, I think that will further buttress the evidence base. And then also very importantly, we also have um, in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, uh, a second large outcome trial with dapagliflozin deliver, which will be the largest trial of patients with half pack with the longest duration of follow-up. So really will help hopefully solidify the evidence base for patients with heart failure and preserved AF, which is really in need of additional therapies.